ladies and gentlemen, Amanda Keller. I first met Kerry Ann Kennelly when she was hosting Good Morning Australia with Gordon Elliott in the early 80s. I worked there fleetingly as a researcher. Since then, I've watched her host Midday. The image of Peter Costello doing the Macarena is burnt into my retinas. And I've appeared on Midday as a regular guest with my radio partner, Jonesy. I've always been impressed by her extraordinary professionalism. She has withstood the shifting sands of the television landscape with pragmatism and with skill. She is as smart as a whip, as funny as all get out, and as we saw with Full Frontal in the 90s, she's able to laugh along when someone takes the piss. Early on, with her big hair and her dazzling smile, some dismissed her as a showbiz queen, but to do so was to miss out on the rich seam of her intellect, her determination, her all-round smarts that always make her the most astute person in the room. Few have survived the horror of the fashion era that was the 80s, like this woman. The shoulder pads, we all wore them. We had to turn sideways to get through doorways. I remember Liz Hayes and Jan Event walking towards each other down a narrow corridor. They were wedged for 20 minutes. <laughs> but Kerry Ann is a queen of reinvention. Those shoulder pads are a memory. She no longer needs them to carry the weight of her enormous talent. Her recent work on Channel 7 Sunday night has given her a chance to show us all her impressive journalism chops. It seemed that nothing could ever rock our cack. But her world changed forever last year when her beloved husband, John, had a serious accident. And as you'd expect, Kerry ann has embraced this new chapter of their lives with strength, compassion and that incredible can-do attitude. I've spent many a delightful hour in this woman's company and what you see is what you get, often with a glass of wine thrown in. She has, I think, the Farnham effect. Oldies lover, parents lover, kids lover. I suspect babies are born with an awareness of KAK in their DNA. <laughs> and personally, I can think of no one more deserving of this big, warm, professional hug than Kerry Ann Kennelly. And now, we just please welcome your host, Kerry Ann Kennelly. I'd love to tell you about Streets Ice Cream. Streets Man is a brand new taste. So just do me a favour and leave me a piece. When the lights come on, Kerry Ann lights up. She's the quintessential showgirl. I suspect Kerry Ann was born an entertainer. She loves entertainment and she loves the laughs and loves to get the audience response, which means she'll try anything. You don't exist in television uh, for the amount of time that she has without having a gift. <laughs> It's her natural disposition to entertain and be the life of the party. I'm not absolutely convinced that many people would realise that Kerry ann has been on the television since she was 13. I love that she had that sort of tenacity to go after what she wanted and insisted that she was the right person for the job until people finally allowed her to do it and she was able to show what she was capable of. My first memories of Kerry ann would have been her being on the television doing Good Morning Australia. You're watching Good Morning Australia live from Perisher Valley, the top of Australia. And interviewing stars, and it would have been my big dream at the time to be sitting in that chair opposite Kerry ann being interviewed by her. She was a big star. She's fearless in everything she does. I believe behind you also, man, you've got a, a, a special little man. They had surprised her with a snake on the set. I would have handled it exactly the same way. She didn't care where her legs were in this short skirt. That was cack. She just responds naturally. Midday was made for someone like Kerry Ann because it's an entertainment show. It could get serious, but basically it was about fun and laughter and making people feel good at home. A cavalcade of stars came through. Please welcome Will Smith. King of Chat, Michael Parkinson. She's a, a deceptively good interviewer, I'd say. I mean, she so don't have to go thrashing around and criticising people and shouting to actually be a, a good performer. I mean, she quite quietly gets out of people what she wants. I mean, a talk show's a relationship. You know that, Kerry, and you flirt terribly with people. I've seen you do it. <laughs> 
It shows something about the people like her when they meet her. I don't know what it's about. It's just something that some people have and some people haven't. It's a, a warmth that she has. I like a little longevity in this <laughs> business as well. I'm looking to you for help. Well, you've been around as long as I have. I know you haven't. No. <laughs> work with some of the biggest stars in Australia and overseas. Uh, she never takes a backward step. She's not afraid to ask the hard questions. When did you get the earring? Eight years ago, for God's sake. Oh. She's also not afraid to have fun. Too much already, isn't it, dear? But let's do the makeover anyway. Don't be afraid. I'm going to do some teasing of your hair. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> do that that is that part of the tango is that another dance that's the you last position the... before you go to your house to make love oh this is amazing you know there's not there are many people who do that if you threw other women stars into the pool they'd get upset and probably storm off well carrie ann doesn't carrie ann knows it's worth a laugh and she'll have a go <laughs> carrie ann could you know convince anyone to do just about anything See the scars? Uh, oh hell, shit. One of my all time favourite interviews with Kerry Ann was with jet lag John Stamos. John Stamos turns up terribly handsome and off his nut. Come sit by me. Come oh, over okay. here. Okay, I'm going to. This is the best invitation I've had Jesus in the God. last half hour. Sit Look down. at this. Is this, right. is, this a, uh, is this a moment to remember? Yes. And I think similarly what Kerry ann did uh, with her guests was that she would recognise that they were often entertainers or politicians like public figures and they would have to perform for 200 people who are in the audience. Now that's a really special weapon that you've got when you're doing a television program that, you know, OK, here's the audience, perform. Oh, I think the camera journalists were very upset by this because it became such big news, you know. The, the professional journalists, uh, Kerry O'Brien's, were really put out that uh, Kerry Ann had managed to do this stunningly good piece of television. And th they didn't think she had any right to do that, but she had every right to do it. She did it extremely well. Claudia, <laughs> this is Joe. She has an innate sense of knowing when to switch gears. Her element of surprise, I think, has always been her key. If you're agile enough and if you're versatile enough and you've got to get your head around, you know, all the range of topics that she had to get her head around, she can interview someone from the most serious to most ludicrous subject. Uh, and she was just very good at it. These are southern white rhino, and they're the ones that they will dehorn and they do it regularly. Kerry Ann's background isn't necessarily news and current affairs, but she managed to straddle both worlds quite seamlessly, and I think that's been so impressive over the years. It's stood her in really good stead, but it's allowed her to dabble in so many different areas of Australian television that very few people have ever been able to achieve. Congratulations, Kerry Ann. I just wish you'd come out of your shell. All I can say is I just love you. I love you. Congratulations, Kerry Ann. You've had a stunning career. What an accolade. Well done, you. I've always felt very grateful to her. I've never told her that, actually, so I'm telling her now. Thanks, Kit. You're really great. Thanks an awful lot. <laughs>
Sorry, I want to do that again. <laughs> I thought you'd need a cattle prod to get most of you up. <laughs> um, wow. My first Logie. And, and I never knew it was gold. Extra bonus. Extra bonus. My only Logie. Um, I did some numbers recently and uh, I came up with the figure that tonight I think is the 31st Logie's night that John and I have been to. I personally think we should have gotten a Logie for attendance before. Now, I want you to all breathe very easily, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the ovation. I'm pretty chuffed with that. But I will be taking the advice of our legend, Australian legend, Paul Hogan. Uh, he gave to the nominees in the 80s at the Oscars, he said, be good, be gracious and get off. <laughs> that said, you will also be very, very glad to know that I'm not going to use this beautiful salubrious occasion to well, as a core celeb, um, or to lampoon, or roast anyone, because I have a book out at the end of the year for that. <laughs> Can I just say, Amanda, thank you very much. What beautiful words. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks also for the package that was put together. I know how much hard work went into that, so everybody, I appreciate it. I, I seriously am so very, very honoured to receive this, and I'm even more excited not to get it posthumously. <laughs> not that there haven't been a few people who've tried to bury me. And I'm not looking anywhere in particular. <laughs> OK. Um, we know this is a tough industry. It's a great industry. It's notoriously fickle. It's an industry that can treat people as disposable. But I am very, very proud to say that I am now entering my... F I'm proud to say I'm <laughs> entering... My 50th year. I've said it. 50th year. That was hard. That was really hard. Uh, 50th year on television. I hadn't even tweaked that till. Uh, I'm more surprised than anyone. Uh, I have looked back and I believe that the way I worked it out, there hasn't in fact been a year. Uh, that I wasn't on TV in the last 50, in one show or another, or some appearance somewhere, virtually every single year doing something. Uh, a lot of people these days are asking me about survival, about longevity, and I think one of the most important uh, reasons for my longevity uh, is the fact that for a, a large chunk of my career, especially early on, there were no camera phones or social media. <laughs> We got away with murder. <laughs> a lot of people in this room would not be working had uh, social media been around in those days. But um, have a glass of wine. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Anybody in the front row? Not red, thanks, Frankie. Oh, Dil oh water. Delta, it's water. Yeah. Thank you. Put that down. That's good. Um, working in television genuinely has given me so much joy. I have had fun. It has been a privilege. It's also given me such an education, an education in, in humanity, generosity, cruelty, compassion, charity, and so much more. I'm very proud to say that in the last 50 years, I've always managed to earn a living and love it in the business that I love the most, the medium I love to mo the most. It's given me so many opportunities and it's appropriate that I thank the people who I've admired and people 
who have inspired me in the very, very first 